way. <laughs> and today is about proving the contrary. And so Mars is fun. Can be fun. Okay, so uh, I've been looking forward to today for quite a long time, and I'm very happy to see so many people joining us for another space lecture that we are doing together with the communication colleagues, so we have a broader reach out. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, I would like to say a brief word what is uh, our space lecture. So the REA Space uh, Research Unit is organizing on a bit of irregular basis some lunchtime talks on interesting subjects. That's one of them. Some of them are a bit more scientific. Some of you have already been here, others not. So uh, maybe this is a, a good starting point to join us uh, more often uh, in, the, in the coming editions. And we will inform you uh, when the next one will be uh, due. Today we would like uh, to welcome uh, our colleague from uh, DigiGro, Hector Guerrero. And uh, I would like to say a few words about uh, Hector. Hector is a national expert. He has been around in uh, DigiGro for four years now. And uh, we are really lucky to have him to have the opportunity today because end of June, his uh, time with us is uh, over and he will leave us. And personally, I'm very sad because he's a very nice uh, colleague also to work with and a very competent colleague. He's competent to talk about the subject of today, about Mars, as he is a physicist, he, is a, he has a degree in a physical sciences, he's a university lecturer, he's a researcher at uh, INTA in Spain, where he has been the founder of INTA's optoelectronics laboratory, which uh, has been involved or is still involved in a Mars mission, so he knows uh, what he's talking about today when he will analyze for us movies, and in particular the one movie that many of you may have seen. Who has seen the movie actually? And who has not seen the movie? Okay, so you will see lots of the movie uh, today. So Hector is very competent to talk about it. And uh, he's, uh, he has also a second head, I would say. Uh, he is actually the founder of a very important <laughs> event in the space community of Brussels. It's called Space Peers. Who has been there? Yeah. <laughs> who has not been there? Okay, so I have to tell you what it's all about. I go back one. So Space Peer is a more or less glamorous gala event in which uh, every, uh, every edition awards are handed out to important people in the space research uh, scene uh, of Europe in Brussels. These are the awards that you can get, and now I realize I didn't bring mine, so I got one of them. I'm very proud to have one. They are 2D awards made of uh, beautiful paper. And Hector is uh, putting a lot of work into to creating very sophisticated uh, affiches to announce the event. So here, here you can see the last edition, you see it's a very serious uh, thing and everybody loves to go. The last one will be in July, but you promised you will come back even after your e, &E time yeah, yeah. to continue the event. <laughs> so this is some important piece of information I wanted to share with you, Commander Hector. Very welcome that you are with us today, and we would like to learn about Mars and uh, enjoy the presentation. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Virgil, for this nice presentation. Uh, for me, staying up there is like uh, staying up home country, to the king of Spain, etc. But in Brussels, uh, I work on the grow before work the enterprise, but this is more paperwork policies, etc. But here is where you are in, in contact with the real life, with the projects, with the experts, etc. So here, I feel much, much better so when I can be like uh, two hours in some way. I'm going to speak about Mars, Mars and the Martian. No worries if you don't, uh, don't show the film. Don't, don't see the film because it's, it's easy for, for us with the uh, content I have just to introduce uh, uh, Mars. First, we will speak a little bit about Mars. This is a talk for general general public. So uh, I'm sorry for the top scientists here, maybe that I, I'm going to be down just to to be close to uh, standard people with no previous knowledge about Mars. First, uh, after uh, planet Mars, we will go to a second part that is the idea that we had before we went uh, to space. Uh, 
uh, from, from Earth. Later, uh, the visit of the solar systems and Mars with different robots, with different satellites. And later, we will speak about manned missions to, uh, missions to Mars, the, the future uh, exp Mars exploration by human beings. This is a disclaimer. This is on my behalf, and no one is supporting this information. So if there is a fire outside, and I need to put in the fire, because I am using a lot of uh, photos, uh, films, etc., it will be my own responsibility. Okay. So uh, for me, this this talk is a different talk in the sense that uh, it's quite risky. This is not a standard conference. <coughs> this is a conference where I try to make a lot of small films just to illustrate to you uh, elements about Mars. That means that uh, in, you know, in, in all these films, I put uh, only a small, a small parts, but trying to, to be accommodated to the uh, 21st century public, because public now is not ready to listen to one person speaking uh, during 55 minutes, if they are telling about the presentation. So you need some, some uh, video, uh, media, etc. So there are a lot of films about Mars, many of them. So uh, I cannot deal with all of them in my presentation. So first, I prefer this. discarded 85% uh, of the films about Mars, okay, with this uh, <laughs> small presentation. So let's go to see Mars. Mars is in the solar system. You, need, you know that we live around a star, it's the sun, there are uh, eight planets, some dwarf planets, moons, a lot of asteroids, comets, uh, different objects, etc. 
and uh, these are many targets to explore in, in, in our solar system. In fact, these these elements <coughs> are, are, are well, uh, as, uh, they are as well orbiting around the around the star. This is not in in, in a scale, okay? But you see that beyond Mars there is an asteroid uh, belt with some asteroids because here should be a, a planet, but due to the uh, strong gravity of the Jupiter, the planet was unable to to set up it, it itself. So therefore, they, all the asteroids. But uh, there was a, a very nice uh, controversy about Pluto some years ago because Pluto, we we learned in the school that was a planet, but it's not anymore a planet. So it's, it's a, a dwarf planet. So, but Pluto is happy now because he has more friends, all the uh, these, uh, asteroids like, like planets. So no worries about Pluto in this presentation as well. So when we speak about the distances in the solar system, uh, I. I uh, Five years ago, I developed this infography, just trying to show people what are the distances. Because if I tell you, Earth is uh, 150 uh, million kilometers uh, away from the sun, you say, okay, one astronomic unit. Uh, but Pluto is 5,000 uh, million kilometers uh, from the sun. You say, this is a lot, but uh, I, I have no, no perception about what it, what it is. So I said, okay, in Madrid, now today in Brazil, between the distance between Madrid and Hawaii, or between Brussels and Hawaii, more or less you know, you are here in commission, you make a fantastic trips for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know this, 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 uh, this one. So, let us put the, the sun in the center here, in Brussels, in the Grand Place. And think about uh, that Pluto will be in Hawaii. So this is the farthest uh, distance in the solar system to go to a, 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 a planet, a dwarf planet. Mercury will be Namur and Liège. Venus mm -hmm. will be uh, between Aachen and Cologne in Germany because uh, to go to Hawaii we need to cross Germany. Okay? So Earth will be in Frankfurt. Mars, Nuremberg. Jupiter and Cairo. Saturn in Kabul. You know where is Kabul because the war and the same So something, but uh, all we know. And Uranus will be more or less in China. Manchuria behind. And uh, Neptune will be below Japan. So these are the distances. So when we go from, from Venus, from Earth to Mars, we go to, from Frankfurt to Nuremberg. Now the new, uh, the, the new horizons, uh, a spacecraft from NASA arrived to Pluto after many years of uh, traveling in space. So you see how are the distances. Relative size. Inside the solar system, uh, we have the rocky planets. You see here the relative size. Size mean in a rocky planet more or less density, similar density, we can in, in, in this way. But uh, regarding to the radius, so on Earth we have gravity one on the surface, but on Mars uh, we have less gravity. So on Mars uh, we can jam and this kind of thing. And on Moon, of course, uh, we have even one shift, shift of our, our, our way. These are the rocky planet the size. Let us compare Earth with Mars. So this is the actual size of, of, of both. The very nice uh, thing is that uh, one day on Earth is 24 hours. One day on Mars, on, on Mars is 24 hours and 40 minutes. How I remember this? Because it's the time you, you need to see a series. Uh, one, one chapter of a uh, big on band theory, Game of Thrones, whatever. So <laughs> on Mars you will have time to, if you live there, to see one chapter, you any chapter. So the day, on Earth is uh, 365, on Mars is double. Or this is, 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 is turning uh, to, uh, last, uh, twice, in, in, <coughs> twice of the time in, in uh, orbiting the, the, the Sun. So this, the gravity is uh, more or less 40 percent. They have less sunlight. They are uh, far from, from the light. And the very important thing, the atmosphere. On Mars, the atmosphere is really thin. That it has a lot of implication. But they have atmosphere. So Mars is the only world where in the future we will be able to live uh, normally with a space suit, not to, uh, to uh, press, but uh, on Mars we will be able to live there, it's light, etc. And important thing is the temperature. The average temperature on Earth is 15 degrees. On Mars is minus 63 degrees. Why? Because there is no atmosphere, and so during the day the sun is arriving there, but at night all the, all the, the heat disappears. And it's not an atmosphere to maintain the infrared there. So Mars is really cold, cold planet. 
discovering Mars from, 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 from Earth since since the very beginning. Martians. Why Let's see if you recognize this boy. This is about Martians. Rather than Saturnians, say, or Plutonians. Because Mars seems at first glance very Earth like. It's the nearest planet whose surface we can see. There are polar ice caps, drifting white clouds, raging dust storms, seasonally changing patterns, even a 24 hour day. It's tempting to think of it as an inhabited world. Mars has become a, a kind of mythic arena onto which we've projected our earthly hopes and fears. The most tantalizing myths about Mars have proved wrong. So a few people have swung to the opposite extreme and concluded that the planet is of little interest. They've... So Carl Sagan, in the 80s, uh, he made a serious cosmos, and to the kids like me, they put in our head Mars. Okay, important uh, outreach first. So, since the very beginning, when Galileo had the, his telescope, he put the telescope to Mars. Mars was well, well known by the Romans. Is the name of Mars is because of the war of, of, of God. Uh, during the history, other astronomers uh, were uh, studying Mars, but was important in the 19th century with Scacchiarelli. It's an astro Italian astronomer that had a big telescope, and he started to, to take images from Mars, and he discovered like some channels there. So uh, he made these, these graphs, and so it seems that from the, the, the polar caps, uh, the, there were like uh, irrigation channels, etc. And later, uh, one, uh, this, is, this was be, uh, because uh, Mars and the Earth are not always at the same distance. In one time, uh, Mars passed very close to the Earth. And in this time, that time was 56 million away from Earth. So he was able to make this uh, observation. And later was uh, this uh, Percival Lowell, Lowell, an American astronomer, and he de finalized the, to develop this uh, the theory about the canals and seeing that it was civilization, etc. So the 20th century started with people thinking that really on Mars there was life, there was Martian, and that there was a, 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 a civilization that maybe where they were exhausted because they had no a clear atmosphere, or these were detected with telescopes from Earth. Um, so people were thinking about uh, having a civilization there. In fact, in the in the journals of the, that age, uh, Percival Lowell uh, published all, all these kind of things. And now, I will show you that uh, in, in, in the, the 24 was the, this, the first science fiction films about Mars. It's from a, a Russian, well, there is a theory that I, I never construct uh, uh, checking, that there is the first film about Mars is Danish you know, in the 1910, 1920. So, but this is Russian, and this is Arita Princess. She got, uh, got in, in love of, well, she's the, the, the daughter of one very important uh, Martian, and she getting fall in love of a human being because uh, of serving with, with a telescope. So this is a, lo a lot of story. <laughs> a lot of uh, books were developed, uh, were, were written about Mars as well during the, the, the history. You know, Ray Bradbury, the Martian Chronicles, uh, all this guy, all this about uh, the the one of Tarzan, Tarzan, uh, Ray Burroughs. He wrote about the John Carter and the Princess of Mars, etc. And this was the the the, the growth in the in the twenties and the thirties. And then appears this Orson Welles, who was a, a, a broadcaster, a, an actor, that uh, he had in the Halloween of 1930, he had a program about the, the world of work of, of uh, H.G. Wells. So, we now return you to Carl Phillips and Grover's Mill. People Bill. got totally hey, scared. Here I am. There's something happening. She had a flame spray over a mirror that they started their magic men. Roger, turn you the flame. Thousands of citizens believed the invasion was real. You're deeply shocked and deeply regretful. The misunderstanding was short-lived, but even so, the broadcast only served to fuel public speculation about potential intelligent life on Mars. The faces of Mars, you know, with a telescope that is so bad. So the, we were there. Now, with telescope, nothing more. Uh, 
thanks God, <coughs> we have the Second World War in the bad, uh, or a bad war, etc. But due to the military uh, interest to kill the other, so they developed technologies that was uh, were impossible to develop during the peace, and they developed the rockets, the Russians and, and, and the Germans, and then they started to develop rockets, and we were able to send a, a spacecraft to go to Mars. This is in the 64, the Mariner, Mariner 4, were the first uh, spacecraft going to Mars. And when they this uh, reached Mars, all the photos he, uh, they, they sent were nothing, no vegetation, nothing. They, they thought that there was uh, life on Mars. After a journey of eight months, Mariner 4 was homing in on its target. Anticipation of not just the scientists, but the public and the news media was incredible because Mars was like to have life, and in popular mind, maybe it had Martians as far as we can tell. Mariner 4 was a flyby, it would get only one chance at the pictures. 10,000 miles from the surface. Mariner 4's cameras whirred into life. These signals came back, if you think of a, a uh, one element, one picture element, one sample of sound, of, of light, the rate at which these came in This is the from Mars, of JPL in that was age. one of these per second. And so it took three weeks for our 20 pictures to come back. The planet was not what they had expected. There was no sign of life here, no vegetation, just picture after picture of a dull, flat landscape. It wasn't until frame 12 that the first features became visible. What we could see were these huge craters, 300 kilometers, 200 mile craters. So if you have craters, means that there is not uh, surface activity, so no running water, this kind of things. So this was in 60, 1964. So uh, people still was waiting for finding life on Mars or even some vegetation or whatever. Then uh, we are not able to send uh, humans beyond the human orbit by now, and we are uh, sending robots. But the robots that we, we send, this is a NASA image, are not that, this kind of robots. And I, I am not speaking about the girl, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the idea is that when we send a robot, this is uh, the old uh, image of ExoMars 20, uh, uh, 2018. Is, uh, when it was ISA only, now it's ISA Roscosmos, the, that mission. Uh, this, this rover is la, like a human being in the sense that uh, you have the mobility, you have the mechanical structure, you have actuators to interact with the environment, you have energy as well, you have communication with Earth, with the environment, etc., with the satellites, and what is the most important thing you are able to detect things with senses and, of course, intelligence, because you are very far away. So you need to take your own decisions. <coughs> well, we have been exploring solar system uh, for 57 years. The first explorer was uh, the Luna 1 of the uh, Soviet mm -hmm. Union. That was a flyby uh, 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 nearby to the moon, very far away. You see this infography of National Geographic is showing here the Earth and around the, all the planets of the bodies and every line represents one mission going there with the color is encoded if it was a, a failed mission or, or not. If we see our missions around Mars, we find all these family of things. So we send a lot of things to Mars. Some of them, of them fail, as we will see. And you see one of the most famous was the Viking, the Viking, you see here Carl Sagan with the Viking mock-up in the Mojave Desert in the, in, the, in the 70s. Mars is hard. 
Now Mars is 28 and Earth is only 24. So Mars destroyed 28 mission going to, to, to Mars failed. And we have 24 that uh, succeed. <laughs> With this infography of the IEEE, I, I, 52 robots were sent to form uh, for Mars exploration. 28 failed. The successful uh, were 24. Five uh, are here with a flyby. These, these are all the, the missions that, that failed. These are the, with the flyby. These are the 11 orbiters we were able to inject in the Martian orbiter orbit. Four landers and as well four rovers. And uh, still seven robots are on Mars are operational. <coughs> Two are going there and six are in development with uh, uh, countries like the uh, United uh, Arab Emirates. So uh, a lot of people is sending their Chinese sending as well, India, etc. This is a vision of all the NASA rovers. This is the Sojourner, the very small one that uh, you, you will see in, in, the, in the film of the Martian now. <coughs> you have the Spirit of Opportunity, and you have now the, the, the Curiosity, the Mars Science Laboratory, now is Curiosity, is operating there. It's like a car, so it's, it's huge. Uh, Rovers are really nice, but uh, meanwhile the Spirit and Opportunity were there, and here all the journals were with the Spirit and Opportunity moving on, on, on Mars, etc. We had the Europeans, the uh, ExoMars, orbiting Mars, and the production, science production, and all the discoveries produced by this ExoMars mission were huge. Here is a resume of ESA, this is the Euro European mission, and this is, is still in, in orbit, because we need to have uh, always uh, missions on Mars just to have uh, repeaters for the communication. So uh, they agreed with the Americans to continue orbiting Mars. Now, in 2018, we will have with uh, ESA Roscosmos, it has been delayed to 2020, uh, one rover that will make a drill uh, in the surface. On Mars, uh, if there is life, and there is almost no atmosphere, the solar wind is always impacting on the Mars Martian surface. So when human beings, we will be there, we will need to live that, uh, below the Earth, below the, the, the ground, because uh, you need uh, at least two meters to be uh, protected. But if they are going to look for life, they need to uh, make it with a drill going two meters below, yes, uh, life could be there if, if there is life. This is the main, uh, the main question for Mars. Another type of mission that uh, all many countries are interested in is going to Mars and bringing some samples and coming back to the Earth, because the laboratories here are huge, uh, larger than, than the ones that we can send there. So publicity, so it's, it's uh, FP7 projects, you know, it is how you know very well. We are working on many technologies, and uh, some of these technologies and the projects are related to Mars, okay? That's uh, positive, sorry for this. <laughs> <laughs> now, mallet missions to Mars. Okay, now we start the, the, the fun. First, in space, Yuri Gagarin, in uh, April the 12th, 1961, he was the, he, this astronaut, it seems the, that he was selected be, because he's a smile. <laughs> <laughs> in that time, there were a lot of uh, uh, the test uh, pilots, and they selected him. In that age, we had the Cold War. The Americans wanted the supremacy in space and the Russians as well. The Americans got uh, Werner von Braun and the Russians got uh, Sergei Korolev. So they were fighting there, putting a lot of money, etc. So the F Second World War produced this energy with the, these uh, v V2 bombs from the, from the Germans. And later with the Cold War, we were able to develop these technologies because people wanted to be. The, the This is Korolev. So Yuri Gagarin was on top of a nuclear missile, you know, interballistic uh, ICBM. And he had the guns there <laughs> on top and went to the space and made one orbit. Was the first person in looking the blue color of air from, from the orbit. So Russians were with that very uh, proud of, of that. 
And it seems that <laughs> it seems that the legend said that the, when he came back to the earth, the Russian premier of that age asked him, "Did you see God?" <laughs> yeah. We don't know the reply. <laughs> okay. And later, in that age, Americans sent to the orbit a chimpanzee ham. So here, you see the difference in the technology. <laughs> President Kennedy made this, uh, said this uh, famous speech in Rice University, said, we will go to the moon before the end of the decade. And they started with the Apollo program, and this was 600 million people watching the landing of the moon. There is, not a, there is a conspiracy saying that this was not true, but this was true. <laughs> They stayed six times on moon. They put there a lot of, of the stuff. Still, you can from the earth detect this, this stuff. A lot of scientific instrumentation. But they stop it to go to the moon. Because in the news, two, one. <laughs> this is the last mission uh, to 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 moon uh, with a camera from the from the moon, and they have to to come back to to Earth. So, going to the moon is only three days. It's really easy. You always see the Earth. They are the humans are there. If you have some some issue like in Apollo 13, they can help you in real time, etc. So, this is uh, uh, coming back to the Earth. So. Psychologically, psychologically is, is, is really important to see the, the, the blue dot there. So the Americans uh, stop it of going to the moon. Why? Because in the news, they have it with the Vietnam War, this kind of things. They were not interested on that. Even they did, the last time they went, the, the news didn't open with a, with a piece of news. We had arrived to the moon again. No, it was the second or the third news. And they were pretty really good as well, like Russians. Okay. So, after the, co the Cold War, finishing space with the uh, uh, <coughs> of uh, Soyuz with Apollo module in the 75, they make peace in space. Space is important because that, even now with all, all the attacks of Russia, these kind of things, etc. Uh, they didn't catch the cooperation for the International Space Station. It's, it's the way where you still are in agreement. So that's the important aspect of the space. Since the year 2000, is inhabited the uh, International Space Station. This is a, 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 a facility that is as large as Bernabeu Stadium, you know. Bernabeu because Real Madrid is the champion. <laughs> so he's a recent, recent champion of Europe, so uh, we have 11. But uh, the idea is that this is a huge, huge st station and is international, 420 tons. This is a lot to put there, very expensive, but it's not so much to go to Mars. So the next manned missions, we want to come back to the moon and to the Earth. This is a very beautiful uh, image from Aurora. Uh, program at ISA because they want to, to make this a uh, comparison with the old explorers, the you know, old con conquerors going to America and to, to the past. So uh, we are here. This is Earth. We are not beyond Earth orbit with human beings since, since the, 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 the 70s. So we think that we are really advanced, but we are not advanced at all. So. The human space exploration will go here, not beyond Mars, maybe one asteroid. But later, or beyond this, we we'll only will be able to send a robotic a probes in the future. For this, the Americans are developing the space launch system of 70 tons or the 130 tons to go to the moon and Lagrangian La 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 point L2, or going even to Mars. So. The steps are back to the moon, capture an asteroid and bring the asteroid here. <laughs> the moon has to make operations on top of the asteroid. 
and landing on Mars in, in, the, in the future. For this, we need launchers, we need capsules, a special a crew capsule like Orion in, in with America, and a space suits, new space suits. Okay, and now, after 31 minutes uh, speaking, we'll go to the Martian, okay? That is uh, the, the final part of, of this presentation, this is the part two. And uh, let's go here to the Martian. The Martian is a film, but the film started with a book, okay? It's an important book that was, is, is quite recent, and an author that is uh, related to, to NASA, engineer, and they made a, a, a movie, The Martian. It was made by Ridley Scott, very nice uh, director, alien, the eight passenger, this kind of thing, and a very famous actor, actor Matt Damon, is in the film, and the story, the author said, okay, I have to make a story. Of course, if you want to make a story to, for the public, you need to go a little bit out from the reality. But despite that, that he went to some uh, strange things that we will analyze, the film is really good from the scientific point of view, really accurate. This is a trailer for those of you that didn't uh, watch the, the film. Every human being has a basic instinct to help each other out. If a hiker gets lost in the mountains, people coordinate a search. If an earthquake levels the city, people all over the world send emergency supplies. This instinct is found in every culture, without exception. The storm had escalated to severe, and we had no choice but to abort the mission. But during the evacuation, Astronaut Mark Watney was killed. <laughs> Watney? And I'm still alive? Obviously. I have no way to contact NASA or my crewmates. But even if I could, it would take four years for another manned mission to reach me. And I'm in a hab designed to last 31 days. So, in the face of overwhelming odds, I'm left with only one option. I'm gonna have to science the hell out of this. Okay, let's do the math. I gotta figure out how to grow four years of food on a planet where nothing grows. But if I can figure out a way to make contact with NASA, none of this matters anyway. Houston, be advised. We've got a video message. It's directed to the whole crew. Play it. My God. Mark Walker is still alive. If we mess up the Earth gravity assist, we die. Okay, so the analysis will be quite easy. We have three, three indicators when it's scientifically accurate, it's not clear the, the element, or when it's really inaccurate. I use this, this uh, image. It's not in the film, it's just only for the publicity for my space beers in one edition. <laughs> and I was really scared because I, I detected here something. That they have a vegetation on Mars. So <laughs> the space beers is a very serious organization. So uh, I, I was uh, really, really worried, but this is inaccurate, you know. But let's go uh, for diff the different aspects. In order to review this, we are going to use the, the following uh, rational. It's like if we are on Earth, we go to the to the Earth orbit, we travel the, the cruise to Mars, we inject it in Mars, we land on Mars, etc. All these all these elements just to feel that they, because the future Mars exploration will be like this, more or less. So it's so accurate. Access to the Earth orbit. These are images from the film. And they are in, in, a, in a spacecraft like the RS-1. So, more or less, this is, is, is green here. So it's accurate. This is, will be the future Ares with for six people. And lift off. As the crew of the Ares 5 begin the next chapter. And this is in, in the field. This is a rocket. Mission. And this is a NASA rocket. Wow. So they didn't spend a lot of money. So one. 
This film is 20 years ahead, so more or less the, the Delta rocket will be there. And a new era of American space exploration. Okay. Second, I made my own, own film. So this is from the Hector Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> I want to explain you something.